uh, because I just put a video out about <clears throat> somebody predicting things, and I used a word <clears throat> uh, describing a certain party, and I used it as an example of how to uh, how to recognize certain parties. But there's all kinds of political parties. There's all kinds of organizations. There's all kinds of nicknames for them, and and there's all kinds of people. Today, even the millionaires, the billionaires, they're all making predictions. They don't say it's a prophecy because in order for you to say you have a prophecy, you have to have God with you to back it up. But some of them are afraid to say that because they, they know it's their own opinion. Even Paul the Apostle knew uh, that he said certain things by permission because they were what he thought. Not necessarily what God was telling him, and at different times in the gospel, if in the in the Bible, in the New Testament, you could clearly see where Paul the apostle believed one thing and then grew out of it and stated in, in, in almost the exact opposite where he was in a certain place and he was working with a certain thing and he said something and people through the ages, ages that interpret this thing it took it and ran with it the way they wanted to. That I had even shared with how in one of the uh, epistles it talked about the lady elect and the only time God used the word elect was make your election sure, your election and calling sure. And so that meant when he said the lady elect, that meant she was called. And she was called to help him, of course. And she had children. But man come along and said, well, that only meant that she had, she had a bunch of children. No, I'm sure she had followers. I am positive because he would never have said lady elect. But you see, everybody <laughs> covers their bases because they're a man. And and the thing they don't understand is this. You can cover those bases till doomsday and you're not going to tell God who to call. You're not going to tell God when you clearly see wisdom and understanding that you never knew and understood before. You want to grab a hold of it. You want to use it. And you want to pretend that you are something that you are not. Um, you can't fool God. You can't, you can't use him. You can't play with him. Because this is why he drew the line to begin with. This is why he he made the understanding uh, that when Jesus said that uh, that there be no marrying and giving in marriage up in heaven, uh, because there's we're going to be like the angels, no gender, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So if there's no gender in heaven, there's not going to be any gender here where God is concerned with His gifts. He doesn't, when he calls mankind, he doesn't call just a man. And this is so foolish and so filled with pride and so filled with, well, they're a man. So they, he said, behead. Sure he did. He said to love them like you do your own body. To love them the way Jesus Christ loved them. Jesus Christ did not do the works that you people are doing. He did not hold women back. He did not sit down and say, well, you can never have this because you're a woman. You can't. Man did that. Man will admit to you that they did that. I've seen it. I've seen them sit down in, in certain uh, trials and talk about it. Well, they decided that because it's a man's world. They wanted a man's world. So what did they do? They made it so a woman couldn't enter into it. So they shut her out. And they... What they didn't realize is, is all of these years, God did not reveal the secrets of men's hearts. He says in the latter days, the secrets of men's hearts will be revealed. And he's doing that right now. But he's not giving it necessarily to a man. He's giving it to a woman because the women have been so oppressed, oppressed by man's domination, some tyrants, some, and some dictators, 
and they lorded over them. They lorded over the church. They said, you can't do this. You can't do that because you're a woman. You can't be in our prayer meetings because we're men. And they it just totally no, ignored uh, Mary and Martha. Totally ignored that she decided to sit at his feet and learn. Now, why would she learn from him? So what did they do in their uh, interpretations? They said, well, she did, She made the choice of worshiping at his feet. Oh, no, she didn't. She did what the disciples were doing. She sat in a room to learn. She didn't. She chose to hear all about Jesus Christ the way the disciples did. But you make up your, their mind. They, man makes up their mind. Well, it couldn't be. God would never call a woman. Well, too bad. <laughs> God called a woman, and you got a problem with that woman because that woman is not backing up to any man. And you can say, you can call me Jezebel till doomsday. But if God gave me the truth in my heart and mind and filled me up with Jesus Christ, you have the problem. Because due benevolence means that you have respect for one another. I've received many men with no problems. Many men and submitted to many men with no problems whatsoever. But I have never had men who would totally, totally think they could dominate what God has done in me because they know better. The fear of God comes on them. They don't have nothing to do with me. I don't have to say, Lord, let the fear of God come upon him. You know, like the prophets say, oh God, let it come true because if you don't let it come true, they'll find out I'm not a true prophet and they'll do this to me and they'll persecute me. and they'll Well, have at it. That's your problem. Because you had no business open, opening up your mouth if God didn't give you the power to say it and didn't tell you to say it. But you see, I don't have that problem. When I say something, I don't have to go before them and, oh, God, don't let them do this with it. Don't let them say it. If you do do certain things with it, you got the problem, not me. So why should I pray like that? Why should I think like that? Somebody would say, well, Mary, and you should this and you should... Okay, I will never listen to another person. You are not the people that that held my hand when I was dying. You didn't pull me through death's door. You didn't bring my spirit back as it left my body. And I could feel all the pain and all the misery of the body right behind me as I walked into the, the eternity, as I, I walked into going into heaven. And, and the Lord immediately put my body back. But I knew what it felt like. <laughs> it happened three times my spirit left my body. So you didn't do that for me. You couldn't, there's no way you could pray me back. You could bring me back. There's no way you could do anything like that with anybody. The devil only has a certain amount of deception. He has only amount of certain uh, angels, the angel of life manifestation, only a certain amount. He can only do it for a season. And he only does it to those who believe him that he can. Because if you believe he has power of your body, he has power of your body. If you believe that he can trouble you, he troubles you. If you believe he can harass you, he harasses you. If you believe that once you gave your life to God, the door is still open to Satan, that's your problem. You don't know how to be rid of him forever because you don't know how to believe for the blood of Jesus Christ because you've never been taught that. You have been taught, well, go out and, and fight that demon and stop that demon. Oh, dear. And you glorify Satan as you do it. You glorify when it is not there. He is a deceiver. He puts a feeling on you. He puts a symptom on you. He puts this on you. And not because he, he can do it, but because you gave him permission by believing he can. If you didn't believe that he could, he, could, he wouldn't come near you. He'd be scared to death of you. Why? Because he would see the blood of Jesus Christ applied. And he would know you're a true believer and you will never receive him. And he would know that you 
you have the power to rebuke him. But people look into the Old Testament at how the Lord allowed Job to be tested and tempted. But you see, we don't live in the day of Job. Uh, Job didn't have Jesus Christ to save him. We do. Job wasn't cleansed by the, by the blood. We are. God tells you plainly and clearly that even John the Baptist, who was one of the greatest in the kingdom of heaven in the Old Testament, is less than the least in the New Testament that belonged to Jesus Christ. And that tells you that why he went into the uh, center of the earth to preach to those who died in the Old Testament so that they could give their lives to Jesus Christ, so that they could believe. He gave everybody just like he gives you. He gave Jews and Gentiles alike. He gives everybody the same opportunity, whosoever will. So I'm just thinking about the times that I heard scripture when people were on death's door. And I'm smiling because I, I heard God call them. And, uh, and it was a marvelous. I heard God say and talk to them that they had no, they had nothing to buy their salvation with. But God said, come because you have Jesus to buy your salvation. And that was, oh my God. Goodness, a glorious moment, a glorious, glorious moment where God took him to heaven. And I think about uh, how God came and, and saved me out of everything. It was like one thing. I've, I walked here, boom, he saved me out of it. I walked there, I, boom, saved me out of it. Over and over and over for 40 years. And you want me to be afraid. And he gives me a message and out of my mouth comes the truth. And you want me to be afraid. I spoke the truth. I'm going to be in trouble. I'm going to have... No. Anybody that comes after me, they're going to have the trouble. I'm not trying to say that because I'm trying to line up trouble? No, I don't even think about having trouble. I'm only saying what God is saying to tell you. The way to think and feel. If he calls you to give you a mess, give a message, give it without fear. Because whatever God wants is more important than what you're f afraid of and what you're thinking and feeling. But you've got to be sure that it's God that's giving you the message. You have to be positive. And the only way you could be positive is if you walk and talk with Jesus Christ. And you pick up your cross and deny yourself. That's the only way you can be positive. You cannot be positive any other way. Because you're always going to come back to the truth. The flesh, when it's in existence here and here, you're going to come back. It was in your flesh. You're going to come back. It was in your mind. But when it comes to God and he sets you free from all that, it's never going to come back that that's the way. It is. So that means that God will be there. He gave you the words. He'll take care of it. He gave you the truth. He will do it. <laughs> it's like I told God when I broke my wrist. I said, where are your angels? You promised me that you would bear me up and look, I'm hurting. I broke this bone into this bone in that doctor's and it looks like this and I need an operation. And where were you? You promised me. And I ripped that half a cast off because they couldn't put a whole cast on it because it needed an operation. And I ripped it off and the second it ripped off, all the pain disappeared. And I went like this and I couldn't hardly believe it was healed. So I knew where his angels were. Under the shadow of God's way, he will bear thee up, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. When you make a mistake, that's a dash. When you have a physical ailment, that's a dash. <laughs> 
There's so many things in life that try to cause you to stumble. That, why do you think even our soldiers use Psalm 91? Because they don't know what's around the corner. That's fear of the unknown. They have to walk this way. Every one of us have to think that way and feel that way. I can remember years ago when the doctor said, you have battle fatigue. Well, the name for battle fatigue right now is post-traumatic stress syndrome. Battle fatigue, he said, it's just like the soldiers go out and they face death all the time. And then they can't take it anymore. And then they become so afraid, they become afraid of everything. So they're so stressed out. Well, I got in that condition because I had tried for years to kill myself. And then when I decided I didn't want to anymore, then I became afraid of dying. And that is when Jesus showed up. That is when the Lord cast out all fear of anything, of, of you, of, of anything. If you cannot walk through your home in pitch black, no lights, and you cannot walk through that house and fear no evil, if you feel a presence of any kind, rebuke it. It's lying. If you feel oh, this is creeping up, rebuke it. It's lying. You should be able to walk through your home with no feeling of stress, no feeling of the unknown, because you belong to Jesus. So if you ask God to saturate your home with the blood and shut out the enemy and saturate it with the Holy Spirit and saturate your body, mind, and spirit with the blood and of Jesus and with the Holy Spirit, you should be able to walk through your house freely. <laughs> I told you, my toes used to bleed because if I didn't see where I was going and I bashed into it, they used to bleed. And, and ever since I believed with all my heart, the scripture being true, when I would hit it hard enough to cause it to bleed, there would be no pain, none whatsoever. There would be no cuts, nothing. It was like it never happened. That's the way... Like I said, when I was making French fries and the oil was bubbling up, I mean, it was boiling. And without thinking and realizing it, I took my four fingers and put it right in the frying pan of that boiling oil. And I thought, oh, and I picked it out and I looked at all the oil on my hands. And you know how oil is. If, if you get one little burn, it stays there for a couple seconds because it, it's, it's, uh, it's not like water. Water will dissipate, but the oil won't. It'll stay there and burn you. And I looked at that and I could not believe. There was no pain, nothing. There was no redness, nothing. I can remember being near a pressure cooker. And and uh, and I was so busy. I was working so hard. And I didn't realize that I released the pressure. And that steam hit this part of my arm where it would have killed me because this is where all your veins are. And it and it hit this part of this arm. And when it hit, it went down like that. And as fast as it went down like that to burn it, that's as fast as the healing. And there was no more there. Now, why would God do that for me? Oh, you think I'm so wonderful? You think I'm so great? You think, I? well, I'm this and I'm that, and God called you to be a prophet. Well, these were the years I didn't know I was a prophet. He had never said that to me. I knew I was different, but I did not know I was a prophet. These are the years that, that I am telling you. I was in an automobile accident, and I was just learning how to drive. And I'm driving uh, past some rows in the grocery store, and out of nowhere, out of nowhere comes a, a car that hit right into the side of my vehicle. And when it hit into the side, my, I went forward and my head 
broke off the rear view mirror. It hit right here in the temple where it could kill you. And I, I, I went like this. I felt like a feather touched me. And I didn't realize the rear view mirror had been bumped off. And, and I, I went like that. And then I, I looked over there and I saw a man watching who rented our garage. And he came over to help. So by this time, they're calling the police and everything else because the first thing they do is that they ask you for your license. But see, I was so busy teaching at school with children that I didn't have time to renew my license and I needed to get a picture and renew it. So it was a matter of days, but I was driving illegally. And as soon as I saw that this was a school teacher that hit into me, and the first thing the police would do is ask you for your license. I just said, Lord, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to be in trouble because I don't have a license. I didn't get it done. I was too busy doing your work. And so the policeman comes up and he talks to me and never once asked for my license. He knew the man that had the business that rented the building off of us. And they were conversing with everything that happened. I had no troubles no problems. I was able to get out and get my license renewed, and I never had a bit of problem. So see how God took care of even that. Anything that would try to trouble me, he was always right there, except for the persecution and the hatred of those who didn't know what they were doing. And even that he fixed. Even that he saved their souls. Even, and I could tell you testimony after testimony after testimony of how many years those people persecuted me and hated me and how many of them came back. Perfect strangers didn't know me from Adam. Were cursing me because of the lies that were put across the whole area. And when they found out that I was a Christian, they cried. Why would God have his hand on me? Why would he do that? I didn't ask him for it. I didn't tell him, oh, when I even talked to him about the license, I didn't say, oh, God, take care of the license. I didn't do that. I did not do that. I said, oh, God, what am I going to do? And he showed me I didn't have to do anything. Like the time I was in another automobile accident. And the impact was so bad, it was like hitting 65 miles an hour head on. And so I'm sitting there, and everything went into slow motion. There was witnesses in front, back, and both sides. And they said, we thought everything went into slow motion, and we thought it was going to take forever. And when that happened, I'm sitting in the car after the impact, waiting because I knew God was there and I was waiting for him to say something. And it seemed like forever before he spoke. And when he spoke, he said, Marion, if you had anything to make right with me, I took seconds of time and I put it in slow motion and I stretched it so that you could have time to make it right with me. And therefore, I want you to know that what you don't see with certain people that everybody thinks, well, you have to have a confession before they go, because if you don't, they're going to hell. You have to have this. That's a bunch of garbage. God says, these people, in seconds before they die, I give them plenty of time to make everything right with me before they enter into heaven. And these lies, oh, that one went to hell. He never confessed. And that one went to And God said, it's not true, Marion. I'm there. I'm there and I talk to them and I bring to their remembrance the things they need to make right. And it's their choice whether they receive me or not. So the paramedics came and here I am. I had already gotten out of the car and everybody said, boy, Marion, we were watching along the highway when they stopped traffic. There you are. I went to the back, the, the car that had a impact like this you know well that car was way over there 
And I was over here. I got out of the car and went over there to make sure everybody in that car was fine. And then I, I went back to my car. And by that time, the paramedics come. And they said, lady, you got to get back in this car. I don't know why. But they said, they put me back in the car, sat me down, put a seatbelt on, and then cut it off. I wasn't the passenger. I was driving. But that's what they did. And the passenger was, you know, but they wanted, they said, they put this big thing on my neck like this. And they said, you must lay still. If you don't lay still, you cannot imagine what's going to happen to your body tomorrow. And they strapped me to a board. And I'm driving down in the ambulance going, get me out of this. I've been healed of cancer, terminal cancer, told I was going to die in days. And you think that I am supposed to go to the hospital in this condition? You think that I'm, I'm going to church tonight. I got news for you. I'm not going to be in this condition. And they said, lady, don't move. I went to church, all right. The steering wheel put cuts on my chest. You could see it. I opened up my blouse. You could see it, it cut my breast. And I, I never forget it. I went down, and, and the church is gone. They're all dead, okay? It, I went down, and it's the lady that I was telling you about that uh, that had the anointing, but she was disobedient. Anyway, I went down and opened up my blouse and showed her. Went back up to the service, and her son was preaching, and he walked by me, and I could feel instantly the whole thing was gone. I went downstairs, opened it up. Everything was completely healed, gone. The paramedics had seen a hem hematoma on my breast this big. And, and when they saw that, uh, the next day I had to go see them, and they couldn't believe it. It was gone. And they called me up wanting to know uh, what church I went to, everything, all this stuff. So, but it wasn't a church. It was Jesus Christ. Okay. So when I, uh, the next day, I went into a little one-stop shopper. And there were the same paramedics. And I went up to them and I said, Look what Jesus did for me. Whew. And I'm dancing around them and everything else. I said, not a bit of pain. And they were shocked. I says, look what Jesus can do. <laughs> That's Those are just tiny little miracles of what he had done in my life. And you're going to tell me that I'm supposed to be afraid of you. You're going to tell me that I better shiver in my boots because you threatened me. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not. Because God has his hand on my life in everything. And if you hate me and you don't want what I have because I'm a woman, talk to him about it. I'm not against you. I don't hate you. I'm not fighting against you, and I'm not telling everybody you're no good. I'm telling people, repent, turn away from what you believe, and go into that Bible and find Jesus Christ. I tell everybody, and I'll, I'll even say them, I'll say, look, I'll help you as long as you need. I'll stay here for four hours and pray you through. And if the next day you need me again, I'll be there. But I want you to go on by yourself, just you and Jesus, and choose the church you want to go to, the place you want to live, what you want to do. That's between you and God. I'm not grabbing a hold of you and saying, you got to follow me. you got to walk with me. you got to do this with me. No, no, no. I want you to go on so that you could help somebody else. I want you to go on. So if you, send, if you save 10,000 souls, I'm sitting there going, ooh, 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 as happy as anything. I don't sit there and say, well, I should be the one that saved him. That's crazy. But they, this is how some pastors act. And that woman I was telling you about, I wasn't allowed to go anywhere or do anything. It had to have her name on it. It had to have, it was of her.
I, I, I had people invited me, come and speak, we need you. Because I was under her in submission. I couldn't go. Because she had to be the one to go. And they didn't want her. So I'm telling you why. I will not submit to any man who has less than what I do. You can't teach something you don't have. You can't give me something you don't have. And if you want to take it and apply it to your own self and become a better Christian, become a better, have more followers, have more everything, that is your sin. Because you see, that is not what this is for. This is so that you can live and walk and talk with Jesus so that he can use you to glorify himself, not you. He didn't do it so that you could make more money, that you could have more followers, and you could have a... This is why I did that. Well, you know, you know, I... I just can't tell you, admit that I got this all of a woman. <laughs> it's a terrible thing, but uh, God, you know me. I I received it off a of, woman, but I just can't admit it, Lord. I can't tell anybody that. They'll laugh at me. They'll talk they'll, because they know women are nothing. And I just, <laughs> and you don't even know <laughs> that God knows that you feel that way. And he wants you to repent of it. <laughs> he wants you to repent of thinking and feeling that because you're a man, you have anything. He is not a respecter of persons. He didn't come to me because I'm a woman and he didn't go to you because you're a man. He didn't give me a gift because I'm a woman. He didn't give you a gift because you're a man. He did it because he wants to glorify Jesus Christ. And he wants to heal and deliver and save soul. That's why he did it. And it has nothing to do with you. And it has nothing to do with me. But don't expect me to submit to someone who knows nothing about Jesus Christ. Who only knows head knowledge and has no heart knowledge. I can see you coming. And I'm going to tell you what. You have no experience with God. you got problems. Go into that Bible and seek him and say, why don't I have it? What did I do? Where am I? What should... Seek ye first the kingdom of God. But when you took it out of the air and grabbed it and said, it's mine. And I'm going to, this territory is mine. These people are mine. I'm going to have better and best because God says I'm going to be blessed. Well, you know, <laughs> God come to me and told me he was going to bless me. But do you know what I did with it? I put it on the shelf and I said, okay, Lord, have at it. And you're the one that said it. You're the one that will do it. I'm certainly not going to do one thing to bring it about. And I didn't wait for it because I said, when you wait for something and you watch for it, it's like watching water boil. It takes 10 times as long. So I only came here this afternoon so that I could make sure that you understood I am against no party. I am against no person. I am against no nicknames for them. I am against none of them. I am against sin. So if you're sinning, well, have at it. I'm against you. I am not against men, and I am not for women. I am not for men against women. I take up no cause. I take up no cause against my neighbors. I take up no cause against my friends. And speaking of neighbors, this is the most peaceful, peaceful neighborhood I have ever lived in, ever. Because I don't have all of this evil coming from people who are praying the wrong way, thinking the wrong things, fighting everything. It's not there. It just isn't there. Now, either God delivered me completely of it and you can't touch it, or they're not doing it. It doesn't matter. That makes my neighbors blessed. That makes me look at them loving the fact that they're my neighbor. Oh, my goodness. 
Oh, my goodness, I have been so blessed to meet some of the nicest people anywhere. I've enjoyed their presence. I've sat with them. They're welcome to come to my house and talk with me. They're welcome to do anything. The only thing I won't do is I won't go out and and submit to people who don't know what I know. It's foolish. It's silly. God said, you don't need them. I taught you. And if I taught you, don't go under somebody who doesn't know what I gave you. So if you got your uh, everything out of books, out of other preachers, out of other teachers, and out of everything, and you never spent time with Jesus alone like I did for years and years, and you never did that because you didn't have any time because you're too busy ministering. Well, you know, I waited on God before I dared go ahead of him. And I let him work it all out. And then I patiently waited. If you want to use me, use me. If you don't, you don't. It's up to you, Lord. It has nothing to do with me.